Okay, let's go ahead and continue our discussion on probability. Uh, we're going to add on uh, another definition so that we can uh, do some more calculations as well. So the next, well, let's put up uh, just a quick review. So we just have the probability of a basic event, once again, number of events in A divided by number of events in the sample space. All right, so that's just basic probability. The next one that we had covered was the probability of A intersect B. And that was just the number of events in both A and B. So we could do something like, we'll do number of outcomes in A and B divided by the total number of outcomes in our sample space. Okay, so we've got two now. Let me put another parenthesis up there. Okay, and then we also covered the union, which is the probability of a union B was equal to probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability of A intersect B. Okay, the next one that, that we need is, it's called a conditional probability. Uh, it's a little bit more complicated, uh, but let me write it up and then I'll explain exactly what's going on. So here it is, we've got, what is the probability that event A has happened given that we know that B has occurred. All right, so if we want to solve this, it's just going to be the probability of A intersect B divided by the probability of B. Okay, so let me talk us through this thing again. So this last one is called a conditional probability. And this is known as given. That little line right there represents given. All right, I think the easiest way to explain this is to go back to our dice example and, uh, and we'll go from there. All right, so once again, we've got that A equaled the event of two, four, six. And the event B equaled one and two. So we've got A and B, and we have our sample space once again. Let me put it up over here. We've got our sample space, which equaled one, two, three, four, five, and six. Okay, so what we're saying is that given that event B has already occurred, what now is the probability that event A uh, is going, what's the probability that event A will happen? given that we know that B has already occurred. Okay, in order to do that, there's a couple ways that we can go about doing this. I'm gonna go about this way first. All right, so the first thing that we need to do is we need to see, okay, what is the probability of the intersection of A and B? We already did that before, and it's not too hard to do. So we know that the probability of A intersect B, that that equaled just one thing, one outcome overlapped between A and B. So that was one divided by six. Okay, so we've got the intersection. We need to know the probability of B. And that guy equaled two, two outcomes right here, divided by our six total, two divided by six. All right, so now we need to find out what is the probability of A given 
B. Okay. So from here, what we can do is we can literally take these pieces that we figured out. All right, so first, the intersection. This is going to be 1 divided by 6 divided by probability of B, 2 divided by 6. Okay, 2 divided by 6. Okay, now from here, if you remember, just some, this is some fraction, I don't know, tricks, I guess, or some tools that we can use. This, we can say that this is instead equal to 1 divided by 6 multiplied by, you can bring what's in the denominator up to the numerator if you flip it over. So this is the same thing as saying 6 divided by 2. If you don't remember that trick, uh, go open up an old math book real quick and it's super handy. But just know that you can take a fraction out of the denominator, bring it up into the numerator if you change these individual numerator when you flip it over. Okay, now that is easy to do. We can cancel out those sixes and this is going to be equal one out of two. So the probability that an event A has occurred given that B, we know B has occurred, is one half. So that's kind of like the long way to do it. Uh, but the nice thing about this is like it's bulletproof. You, you find the intersection, you find the probability of the second of the one that's given, so this second part, and then you just divide the two and you're done. It'll kick out the right answer. Now if you wanted to think about this, you could also use a little bit of brain power and, uh, and go through it much easy, much more, I don't know, easier, quicker, whatever. What you can do is say, okay, I know that B has occurred. So I know that the answer is either one or two. So, you know, my role, I, somebody said it's a B, a B event has occurred. And I want to know, okay, what's the probability that it's an A? Well, of the events that are B, there's only one that was an A. So now it's one event that's an A that's also in B divided by my sample space. Well, I have a new sample space, really. I have this sample space, my sample space of B because I said that B has occurred. So my new like sample space, I could just divide one divided by two and get it like that. Um, but either way works just fine. Uh, this is super handy because you can just find the intersection and then you find this probability. Now, one interesting thing is what's the, what is the probability if we had had a conditional, or not a conditional, but if we had used mutually exclusive events? So if we instead had used event C, so from before C had been equal to, uh, sorry, three comma five. Okay, so in this one, what would the probability be of A given C has occurred? Well, the handy thing here is, you know, we could look at the probability of C. It's, you know, two out of six again. Uh, but we could actually stop this really quickly because we know that the probability of A intersect B are, is, well, we have to find this intersection. So for this one, for A intersect C, there is no intersection. It's zero. So this conditional, if C has occurred, then there is a zero. There's no chance that A has occurred. And so we can go straight uh, to zero. And that, that's handy to know that if you have mutually exclusive events and you try to see what's their conditional probability, if one of them has occurred, it's impossible for the other one to occur. And so you can kind of short circuit uh, your calculations for figuring out the, the conditional probability.